Amaco. A simple steel tube about six feet long, filled with a mix of nitric acid and synthetic fuel. Able to travel over six miles in just 14 seconds. Over a million are planned for production by 1945. But that didn't happen. It was clearly beyond their capacity to do. They were absorbed with, they thought they had either won the war, or then they were absorbed with maintaining the war to as long as to keep themselves in power as long as possible. They never concentrated their resources. They never allowed the people who might have done these things to get together and do them. There was too much suspicion. There was too much uh, uh, party politics. This computer simulation shows how the defensive Typhoon Rocket's mobile shooting base will look when rebuilt. A secret science artifact that perpetuates the wonder weapon mystique today. These craftsmen are building just one Typhoon, not the millions Germany dreamed would cleanse the sky of Allied bombers. Ultimately, it's the ingenuity of Nazi weapons, not their numbers, that propels the world further, faster, and higher than anything ever seen. Nazi secret files reveal war machines so futuristic that it's hard to believe they were spawned in our grandparents' time. Powered flight is less than 30 years old when Hitler seizes power. Yet within months, the blackboards and blueprints of his Third Reich are bursting with incredible designs. Before the war is over, Germany will produce a series of aeronautical firsts that remain the basis for many air and spacecraft today. The Arado 234. The world's first operational turbojet bomber and the most advanced jet of its kind. The Arado was the uh, second of the airplanes that reached production employing the Junkers Jumel 004 engine. And uh, it uh, was just a very lightweight, clean, uh, streamlined airplane that uh, put a lot of pilot duties on. The pilot had to be the bombardier, and the, the navigator, and the gunner. But it was effective, it was easy to fly, and, and uh, relatively easy to maintain. So uh, it, it served in small numbers and was an uh, airplane that any country would have been proud to fly. Even earlier, there were the many marvels of Munich-born Dr. Alexander Lippisch, who designed a series of delta-wing gliders in the 1930s that eventually led to the introduction of the rocket-powered interceptor Messerschmitt ME-163 Comet and the better-known Messerschmitt ME-262, the world's first operational jet fighter, able to outrun any Allied aircraft by as much as 100 miles an hour. It is considered the most advanced German craft to actually make it into combat. A lot of the things that they were trying to do were things they were driven to do. With the invasion of France, the Germans were faced with a situation in which uh, their territory was more and more confined. So their thoughts began to turn to vertical takeoff aircraft, and so they wanted rocket fighters that could ascend vertically to attack the American squadrons because they didn't have time to take them off and have a regular fighter plane climb. To this end, Nazi dream machines include the Falkwolf rotary jet, with liquid-fueled rockets at the tips of its triple propellers, designed to take off vertically, then fly like a plane. But the most incredible vertical lift weapon of all is thought to be hidden in the secret hangars at Penemunda, a Nazi UFO. An article in German news magazine Der Spiegel later reveals the secret invention Rudolf Schriever plans for the SS from neighboring Czechoslovakia. The piloted Schriever Flugkreisel, nearly 50 feet in diameter, with three impulse jets on a rotor inside a circular fuselage. This UFO was never built. But 
But further clues to a flying saucer surface here along alpine forests and streams at a castle in Upper Austria. A disc-shaped propeller-like invention using the principles of matter transformation and energy flow to create a fuelless engine based on the natural turbulence created by swirling water or air. Jörg Schauberger says that his grandfather's concept for a totally new propulsion system turned rumors of a UFO into reality. In the early 1930s, Victor Schauberger is intrigued by the ability of fish to swim upstream. Inspired by this natural phenomenon, he devises a silent, vacuum-powered engine to generate thrust without combustion. A revolutionary unit for airplanes to be pulled rather than pushed forward. He calls it the Repulsine. The Repulsin, or Repulsin in German, um, was meant to be a uh, some kind of uh, reaction chamber where some uh, transmutations would take place uh, uh, with the molecules that are sucked into this chamber. Even today, the Austrian would be ahead of his time. In World War II, his invention is right on course with Hitler's quest for wonder weapons. Against his will, Victor Schauberger is forced into the very heart of Nazi science, working inside a weapons lab staffed by slave labor. But there is no weapon-like thing with this repulsion. It's uh, only meant to be some kind of uh, propulsion system and not a weapon itself. But elsewhere, deadly innovation is in full swing. Among the top secret correspondence between Nazi officials and German Air Force Colonel Schroeder Strands, there's a clue about a wonder weapon that's rumored to have the power to kill, heal, and even help find oil. The colonel repeatedly offers his ambitious proposal to the armed forces. In the last desperate days of the Third Reich, the SS decides to support the project. His brainchild is the stuff of science fiction. A wonder weapon that can pierce the thickest armor or send enemy planes crashing down from the sky. A test is to be conducted at a secret location. Crates are unloaded at night, so no one will be alerted to the classified operation. The crates contain valuable metals and a Geiger counter to measure radiation. Dawn, March 1944. The colonel takes off for the test area. If the weapon works, he'll receive unlimited financial support. Colonel Schroeder Strands is the only man who knows the exact details of the tests to be run. A quarry in the middle of the forest in the Hartz Mountains. 